people of Liberia are honored by your presence. Since the convening of the 16th Summit of the Organization of African Unity in 1979, Liberia has not hosted a summit of this magnitude. This meeting marks a turning point in the post-conflict recovery and reconstruction of our country. The meeting also holds a special meaning for another reason. We can recall today the pivotal role of ECOWAS in the restoration of peace following the protracted civil crisis in Liberia. Many ECOWAS citizens made the ultimate sacrifice with their lives for the uninterrupted peace which we continue to enjoy. Today, our organization continues its mission of promoting peace even as it faces challenges linked to the spread of terrorism. Terroristic attacks are engendering instability in a number of our member states. And we know that terrorism constitutes a growing threat for all of us. The most recent manifestation of this menace with the attack perpetrated against the people of Niger resulting in the loss of lives. We must work in concert across borders and oceans to end this threat. May I therefore ask you to rise and join me in a moment of silence to the memory of all the innocent souls and gallant citizens of ECOWAS whose lives have been shortened and brutally by conflict and terrorism. Please rise. Thank you. May their soul rest in peace. It is my honor to be here with you today and a pleasure to convey greetings of the United Nations Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres, to this august body. The Secretary General, who is following events in West Africa with keen interest, is confident that the decisions to be taken at this summit will help further consolidate the sub-region's remarkable achievements in the areas of peace and security development, and human rights. A lot has happened since we last met in Abuja six months ago. At the time, we deliberated on measures to be taken to ensure that the will of the Gambian people expressed in a transparent, peaceful, and credible presidential election would be respected. Thanks to you and your collective efforts, the duly elected president of the new Gambia is now among his peers. Welcome to Moldovia, Your Excellency Adam Abaru. <clears throat> Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, allow me already, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, to congratulate Cote d'Ivoire on its election as a member of the United Nations Security Council. I take this opportunity to also welcome the call by the 38th meeting of the Mediation and Security Council at the ministerial level of 31st May to strengthen the collective engagement and collaboration between ECOWAS, the AU, and the United Nations. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, even as we celebrate our successes, we must acknowledge that sources of concern remain. Over the past months, men on motorcycles have forced themselves into schools, shouting that education must stop. Teachers have been threatened or killed. And here, allow me to pay tribute to teachers who refuse to be intimidated and continue to equip the students with their most precious assets in life, education. Police stations, symbols of the authority of the state, have been attacked. 
camouflage fighters have overrun military posts, killing soldiers and carrying away weapons and material. We must reverse the state of lawlessness that has afflicted much of the Sahel, creating entire ungovernable zones where the presence of the state can hardly be felt. Despite our vigilance, merchants of organized crime, preachers of hate, and smugglers of drugs, persons, and weapons continue to crisscross borders. The widening security vacuum across the Sahel has produced two countervailing forces. On the one hand, violent extremists and criminal networks are competing to fill the void. On the other, this has led local communities and their vigilante groups to increasingly take up arms to protect their families, land, and property, including their cattle. In the face of such gaps, people tend to the primordial bonds of language and lineage to seek protection within groups, even if they may not agree with their extremist ideologies that threaten to rip communities apart. We must continue to make every effort to prevent at all costs the quest for safety turning into conflict and more criminal violence. On this note, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I applaud steps taken by Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso to pull forces under the Litako Gruma Authority to enhance collaboration across their common borders. And I'm impressed by their efforts, together with Chad and Mauritania, to set up the G5 Sahel Joint Force to combat their common enemies. While our action must be immediate and have impact, our vision must continue to be strategic and holistic. Accordingly, the United Nations remains resolute in working with the G5 Sahel countries in the implementation of the UN Integrated Strategy for the Sahel around its pillars of governance, security, resilience, and development. I'm deeply honored to be here today, and I want to thank you for your great hospitality uh, in inviting me. Uh, this has been a dream to come here to this organization in West Africa. And there's so much, so much that we can do for the betterment of our peoples. And yet when I landed here after a long flight from Israel, I found that a somber cloud hangs over this glorious day. This is the cloud of terrorism that has uh, claimed the lives of so many innocent Africans most recently in Niger and Mali. And in recent hours, another terrible attack was launched on innocent people in the heart of London. We condemn it. We send our condolences to the British people. And we pledge our commitment to fight this scourge, this scourge that knows no bounds. These terrorists worship death. They murder indiscriminately. But they will not frighten us. They will not terrorize us. They will only harden our resolve to defeat them. And together, together here in Africa, in the Middle East, and Europe, everywhere, together we will defeat them faster. But our goal here is not merely to uh, join forces to fight the bad, but to work together to advance the good. And in this spirit, uh, I come here as an expression of a simple truth. Israel is coming back to Africa, and Africa is coming back to Israel. I believe in Africa. I believe in Africa. I believe in its potential present and future. It is a continent on the rise. Its people are diverse and talented. I've made uh, strengthening our relations one of our top priorities, national and international priorities of the State of Israel. It's the reason I became the first Israeli Prime Minister to visit Africa in decades. Well, one thing I can assure you 
It won't be decades until an Israeli leader visits Africa again. It won't be five years, it'll be a few months. Africa and Israel share a natural affinity. We have, in many ways, similar histories. Your nations toiled under foreign rule. You experienced horrific wars and, and slaughters, and you're still fighting to get out of the past into the future valiantly in things that, and efforts that I deeply admire. With determination and conviction, you won your independence. You healed the wounds of the past to chart a future of hope for your, for your people. This is very much our history. Our people, too, were denied independence for far too long. Our people, too, suffered the indignity of bondage, slavery, and dispossession. Our people, too, experienced unimaginable horrors of mass death and genocide. But we never, ever gave in. We fought for our independence and won. We established a thriving democracy in the heart of the Middle East. We developed one of the world's most dynamic economies. We became a world leader in agriculture, water, cyber technology, technology of communications, security, and much more. Today, we seek to share our experience with the governments and peoples of Africa. ECOWAS' mission is to increase peace and prosperity by harnessing Africa's vast resources. I came to Africa last year, to East Africa. I saw these resources firsthand. I saw diversity and richness. I saw passion and productivity. I saw young African entrepreneurs who are building companies, harnessing the power of the digital age. Africans are seizing the future. Israel wants to seize this future with you. You truly have no better partner for this mission than Israel, because Israel is a world leader in technology, in all areas of technology, and because it has to be understood that the distinction between high-tech and low-tech is rapidly disappearing. Every field, every field without exception, is becoming technologized. And unless you absorb this technology and apply it to the various areas of critical life, then you will fall behind. But if you seize it, if you seize it, you jump forward. The simplest example that all of us know is in cellular phones. Look at what possibilities accrue to the people of Africa from the use of cellular phones. Enormous possibilities. But if we had to develop this communication networks by laying pipes and lines and so on, these benefits would never accrue. It's the use of technology that allows you to leap forward over generations. And this is the leap that Israel can and wants to do with you. Though small in size, Israel is a world leader in so many fields, in energy, in agriculture, public health, water management, water creation, just creating water literally from thin air, and of course, in the vital area of security. So I want to thank you for the great honor of addressing you here today. I wish the best of luck to the incoming chairperson of ECOWAS, the president of Togo, President Nassimbe. And I want to close by inviting all of you with a, a traditional prayer that the Jewish people have had throughout the centuries across the world. It was next year in Jerusalem. But I have to say, why wait for next year? You're all invited this year, and you will be received with the greatest friendship and the greatest respect. Thank you. Merci. Thank you very much. Shalom.